I think that we might have missed some really, really good news, man, because according to the American left, Donald Trump is no longer a danger to democracy. He's no longer a would-be dictator, fascist cult member. None of that worked. None of it was true. So now Donald Trump is apparently just weird. Some of what he and his running mate are saying, well, it's just plain weird. <laughs> These guys are just weird. That's where they are. Uh, as weird and creepy uh, as J.D. Vance. Super weird idea from J.D. Vance. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's quite weird. They're just plain weird. Just plain weird. Just plain weird. That stuff is weird. They come across weird, and then they start being weird. Yeah, they're weird. Being a really weird. He's such a weirdo. Donald Trump and his weirdo running mate are weird. Deeply and profoundly weird. They are weird. These Republicans just being weird. It's just weird. It's really weird. Republican weirdness goes even deeper. He said a lot of things that are weird. A weird style that he brings. Weird policies. Let's start with, with the weird thing, because it is a thing. Just plain weird. What was weird was his talking about Diet Mountain Dew. Who, who drinks Diet Mountain Dew? Have you ever seen the guy laugh? That seems very weird to me that a, that an adult can go through six and a half years of being in the public eye. If he has laughed, it's at someone, not with someone. That That is weird behavior. Weird and cultish. These are weird people on the other side. He kind of doubled down on his weird ideas. Honestly, man, I wasn't even going to talk about this stuff when they started doing this insanely stupid narrative, mainly because it just seemed pretty damn pointless to even pay any attention to it. I Never in a million years did I imagine that they would have kept up with it, but they have. I mean, they are still doing it. They are still on the weird kick, right? And it's truly, it's almost unbelievable. I mean, just think about it like this. Some high-powered Democrat strategist somewhere is literally getting paid for this. You know, dictator was a flop. Bloodbath didn't work. No one cares about January 6th anymore if they ever did. To the strategist credit, man, I mean, I think they realized that the Democrats, they really can't play the democracy drum anymore. They can't talk about democracy after what they did to Joe. So weird is apparently what they came up with, right? But something tells me that this, this cannot possibly work quite like they think. That turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again they look at it so i learned about roaches i learned about kids jumping on my lap and i've loved kids jumping on my lap some of the descriptions of why they're there but first we want to bring in our panel dana perino is some of the descriptions of why they're there but first we want to bring in our panel dana perino is as a full service presidential candidate yeah. Stand right next to me. There you go. And then we're going to have. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you know what my, what my dad used to say? Your granddaughter said one important job. Good evening, folks. My name is Charlotte Clymer. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a writer and activist, and I am so excited to be part of this historic gathering of women across the country. I am a childless cat woman, but I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> Bring laughter on. What do you say to Vance? Yeah, what, what is your message to Vance? <laughs> your freedom of expression of yourselves in drag is what America is all about. I say that all the time to my friends in drag. Good to see you, Senator. Thank you for joining us. How are Appreciate you? it. How are you? Anna, thank you guys. And my pronouns right. are she, her, and hers. She, her, and her. Mine too. <laughs> Poor hubby. Poor hubby. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we really want to 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 base our treatment and uh and to uh, affirm and to uh support and empower these youth not to limit their participation in activities and sports and even 
uh, uh, limit their ability to get gender affirmation treatment in their state. And developing on Capitol Hill, a U.S. Senate staffer who worked in Maryland Senator Ben Cardin's office is out of a job after video allegedly shows him having sex inside of a Judiciary Committee hearing room. Aiden May Swarovski re reportedly recorded himself in the act. Yeah, so, I mean, there you have it, man. Whether you think filming yourself in the act on the floor of the Senate or whether you think Joey sniffing kids or Nancy lying about all her friends in drag, whether you think those things are weird or not, I think it's pretty safe to say that in comparison to any of that, J.D. Vance having an opinion about abortion is pretty damn far from being weird, right? And honestly, it's, it's, it's so hard to believe that this is even... The angle that they're taking, right? This, I cannot believe the left wants to go down this road, right? The people that came up with that, whoever the strategist is that came up with this, apparently does not realize that the left is actually made up of a bunch of weirdos, like legitimate weirdos. I mean, it's pretty damn funny when you think about it. And personally, man, I think whoever's given this advice, I think they need to keep giving advice. And the way it looks, man, it looks like they absolutely will because their partners in the media, man, they're eating this stuff up like crazy. I mean, every single one of them, leaving sane people in the media like Scott Jennings looking like they're literally stuck in an episode of The Twilight Zone. Well, now they've been trying something completely different and completely unlike the Democratic Party, which is to just throw a word out there. And they're, the word that they're throwing out there about Trump and J.D. Vance is weird. That's it. Weird. Listen to this. Some of what he and his running mate are saying, well, it's just plain weird. <laughs> These guys are just weird. That's where they are. I mean, it's like weird what he does, right? I mean, on the other side, they're just weird. No matter what kind of weird stuff they keep saying. What was weird was him joking about racism today and, and, and then talking about Diet Mountain Dew. Okay, so they've got the talking point, Scott. They've got it. And then you chuckle, but, you know, it's the kind of word that if it sticks in people's minds can make whoever you're talking about look kind of silly and small. Are you worried about it? No, because I think any Republican would say, I think the Democrats are weird. I mean, I think it's weird that Kamala Harris is in the process right now of trying to repudiate every single position she ever took when she ran for president. I think it's weird that they're currently engaged in massive racial segregation of all their supporters. I mean, you could go on and on and on about all the weird things that Kamala Harris is doing, all the weird things she's done. I think it's weird of these phrases she uses in her speeches all the time. So I don't think the campaign is going to be fought on who's more weird, who's seen as more weird. I think it's going to be fought on one thing, and it's going to be on who can do the best job as president. In the Wall Street Journal poll this week, Donald Trump had a 51 percent job approval. The Biden-Harris ticket is still down in the mid-30s. It's going to so be fought on cost of living. It's going to be fought on immigration and who can make my life better. These semantics about weird and that, it, that's not the issue for swing voters. It's why is my life so expensive and why is my community unsafe and overrun with illegal immigration? That's okay, it. Matt, uh, Congressman Rose, can I just ask you a question? Because Scott just brought something up important. The 51% approval rating for Trump. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really amazing for Trump. That is a really high approval rating. So just take everything else out of it. Sure. She surged in the polls, her approval rate. Do you see that as something Democrats should be concerned about? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why they're going to spend an exorbitant amount of resources actually reminding the American people about what life was like under Trump. The hysteria, the constant chaos, the utter incompetency. And look, he still has, you know, an understandable bump from what happened several weeks ago, an understandable bump from officially becoming his party's nominee. Yeah. That is all going to change. There is no question that the momentum is on the vice president's side right now. And yep. no one sees that changing for, for quite some time. I'm not exactly sure who this particular guy is, but something tells me, man, that even as tone deaf as their Democrats and their weird strategists are, something tells me incompetence is just not an angle of attack that they're going to try out, especially with Kamala Harris in the race. And as far as the rest of what he said about life under Trump, he talked about the hysteria and the chaos, which is what these people always talk about, man. But again, anyone who still has the ability to look objectively at any of that stuff, I, I believe, understands that the hysteria and the chaos didn't come from Donald Trump. It was literally all manufactured to focus on Donald Trump. I mean, these are the people that we're watching. These people are literally responsible for the chaos, the hysteria, and every bit of the division in our country. And if 
honestly, if we had a fair and competent media, people that were willing to hold literally all government accountable, not just Republican government. I mean, just imagine where we would be, man. Imagine the things that we'd actually be capable of. Right. But they they can't do that. They don't do that. And we see that right now. You know, they spend their time rewriting Kamala's history at the same time they're calling the other guys just weird. Right. And literally all while the Harris campaign is racially segregating voters in their fundraising efforts. That's normal. But J.D. Vance is weird. Kamala Harris faking a southern accent while talking to a predominantly black crowd and racially segregating her voters, that's apparently normal. Pretty damn remarkable stuff. The fact that in just the last week, we have seen black women and black men and LGBTQ people, the whole queer communities come out, Latinos, native folks and two spirit folks, as well as white women answering the call. And tonight, right now, as we sit here, you've white got dudes. white dudes for for uh, Kamala, can I, can I right? ask a question? So can everyone I ask a is question? coming out in support of this candidate and you win in America when you get all the people behind you, not just a small okay. faction of them. Quickly, Scott. Can I? Yeah, I, I just I am I am mystified by the newfound Democrat obsession with racial segregation. I find all this racial segregation. I mean, I guess the party's getting back to its roots. But I, I mean, I find this crazy. I mean, that you are principally organizing all of your supporters by race and forcing them all to get on these calls. And you have to be a certain race or gender to get on the calls. I find this to be Absolutely, completely Scott. bizarre and, behavior. And we don't need you to understand it because here's the thing. We know that we win when <laughs> okay. we bring together people and have a big tent coalition. But of you're not. Everybody you're separating who makes them. You're, you're dividing America. them. No, we're actually bringing them together. And you're by dividing the way, them. just look at the numbers. We don't need to debate this. Look at the cash and look at the support. Right. This momentum that you see in just seven days is greater than any other presidential campaign in history. So say what you will, bringing people together who we can be proud of who we are, whether we're black or queer or otherwise, is the winning strategy. Think about what you just heard there. According to the left, segregating people along racial lines or sexual identity is actually bringing people together, they say. And the proof of that is the dollar amount that they raise. I mean, no matter which way you look at it, man, that just does not make logical sense. And this she's right. I mean, this lady is right. This is a monumental start to a campaign as far as fundraising is concerned. But the amazing thing is, I mean, their candidate hasn't even had to utter even one unscripted word. How wild is that? I mean, how crazy is that? And honestly, I'm looking forward to watching all the people that abandoned saving democracy and have racially segregated themselves in order to support Kamala Harris. I want to see these people actually react to Kamala Harris talk, because I promise you, most of these people have no idea how fake and how fraudulent the woman is. You know, this it'll be interesting to watch. Right. But I'm getting a little sidetracked. Just another quick reminder of what is weird and what is apparently normal. We are all in this together and your vote is your power. So please make sure your voice is heard this November and register to vote at vote.gov. Can I get an amen? Amen! Now on with the show. And remember, you better vote. By taking the phenomenon, you know it. Indeed, I you do know the phenomenon. Yeah, what, what is your message to Vance? <laughs> You're the ah! <laughs> you don't mess with cat, uh, uh, Charles's cat ladies. You think that we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked? Funny, just this once, you're correct. One sec, democracy's calling. <laughs> See you, Daddy. Bye. Hi, my name is Cooper, and this is a day in my life as a White House intern. <laughs> Vote Senator Mac. Yeah, so. <laughs> Do with that what you will, man. I mean, these are the people who expect you to be moved by their passionate declaration that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are just weird. I mean, that's pretty remarkable stuff, right? Here's where I'm at with it, man. If this is where they're at 90 something days to go, no policy, no values discussed, no record, no plans, just complete emptiness. I mean, just calling really just juvenile names, right? I mean, all while their candidate hides, just like. Biden did four years ago, she hasn't had to say one unscripted word. I mean, even when 
commenting on American hostages coming home from Russian gulag. She couldn't even offer a sincere, unscripted word on that. The lady, she's just a fraudulent robot, man. I mean, if you cannot talk unprompted and sincerely about American hostages being released and finally sent home, then there honestly, there, there's something absolutely actually wrong with you, right? But this, this is why they actually make her read from a script. I mean, here she is actually attempting to speak from the heart on hostages coming home. This is an extraordinary day. And um, I'm very thankful for our president and what he has done over his entire career, but in particular as it relates to these families and these individuals what he has been able to do to bring the allies together on many issues, but in particular this one. This is just an extraordinary testament to the importance of having a president who understands the power of diplomacy and understands the strength that rests in understanding the significance of diplomacy and strengthening alliances. This is an incredible day. You can see it in the families their eyes and in their crimes. Yeah, that's a typical insanity salad from Kamala Harris right there. But this is who she is, man. And honestly, this is who these people are. You know, put her in front of a black crowd and she'll use a fake accent, put her in front of a bunch of Marxists and she'll talk about Medicare for illegals and put her in front of reporters asking about something serious and important. And she's got to read Paid, you know, words off a page like a robot, right? But this is who these people are. This is about as deep as they go. And the rest of us, apparently, we're just weird, right? But that's just my take, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, be a part of our growth. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next one.